Life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hello. Hello. So, I am Lainey. I am Marshall. And uh, we are talking today about the books that we read in April. Now, if you remember from last month, I did a large amount of books. I have to say we did not do as many this time, but that just gives us more time to talk about the actual books that we yeah. read instead of just listing them off. I'm going to say, like, I only did one less book than last month, but... A lot more of my books were comics, so it isn't a huge amount of extra reading. Right. Yeah. My page count is actually much less. Yeah. I think mine is too. And I think that's because last month we read A Court of Silver Flames, and that's yeah. like almost 800 pages. So yeah, exactly. that really tipped us up there. But I think I was a lot more moderate in the pages of the books that I was reading this month, for sure. I have to say that while I read some really good books this month... Overall, the amount of five-star reads that I have are not as high as normal. I felt like, you know, this month, I just wasn't like, yes, this is my favorite book. I just didn't have yeah. that this month. And that's kind of sad. So maybe cross your fingers next month. Maybe. maybe. It just feels like this entire month was just kind of long and draggy. And I didn't have a lot of favorite parts of the month yeah. either. No, it just it was just there. I think... Now that we're going to be starting May, and that starts in the summer, and here in Orlando, that kind of goes into a busier season, I think either we're going to totally not be able to read as much, or we're going to read a lot to kind of de-stress the yeah. fact that we are going into a busy month, but there it is. So let's go ahead and talk about our stats, and then we will jump into the books that we read and what we thought about them. Sure. You want to lead off? Sure. So as far as the amount of books, I have read 17 books in the month of April, making a grand total of 72 books for the year. Now, oh. my Goodreads goal right now is two books a week. Mm -hmm. So it's 104. I'm at 72. You're so halfway there already. I, I think I'm like 60% of the way there. Last year, like I said, I did 208. So, or at least maybe 210, I can't remember. So I know I'm going to hit double that. I'm, you know, so I'm well on my way. I think I'm like, my goal is 100 for the year, and I'm probably going to blow that out of the water. I'm 40 books already. What did you read last month? How many? 12 was last month, and this mm -hmm. month we've got 11. Oh, okay. So you're there. You're there. So as far as pages, I read 5,366 pages, making a grand total of 25,271 pages for the year, making me a level 22. I have read 2,326 this month, and for the year, I've got 12,622, bringing me up to level 18. Mm. Now, those of you that are tracking our stats from one month to the next may note that we have maintained the same gap from last month, although before that, it was a slowly widening gap. So as month. far as stars go, I had only two five stars this month. One 4.5, it was almost there. I have 12 four stars, two three stars, and I did not finish six books this month. I have four four stars, six three stars, one two star. That means, yeah, yeah I have no five stars, and wow. I did not DNF anything. So I'm kind of with you. I really didn't have any books that screamed, yeah, Marshall, you're going to be happy. Yeah, I read a lot of books this month that I think were like, these are very well-written books, but I'm just kind of, you know about it yeah that's how maybe I that's felt. saying more about me than the actual book <laughs> that's kind of where i took it too yeah yeah all right so as far as like genres like i'm gonna break it down a lot more than marshall does for his but as far as genres i read 14 adult books and three young adult books um and then as far as actual genres i read four thriller horror and that's for me is kind of not usual. I mm. usually read a lot. I read two of the fantasy area, four of the contemporary romance, 
one historical fiction, and my grand total five nonfiction this month, which is wow. pretty high. Yeah. Uh, I have two sci-fi, three fantasy, one thriller, three horror, and one other. So types of books. I listened to four audiobooks, 11 ebooks, and read two physical books this month. Six audiobooks and five comics. Oh, so the comics are actually on your... They're more ebooks, yes? Yeah, I have them digitally. And then lastly, I like to track where I get these books. So I got seven from NetGalley, and you're going to see I was kind of a bad reviewer girl because there were a lot that I just couldn't wait that come out later this year that I absolutely had to read. I got two from Libro. I am a Libro influencer. And I got one from the library. I purchased three of them. And one I was just sent for a review by an independent author. I got two from Book of the Month and one from Audible. So that's where I get all of my books. You mostly get from library, right? I got a lot of this from either the library or from Libro. So let's jump into books. I think we should start with uh, just mentioning the ones that we had on the lower end of the list. So why don't you start? Because I think you had a two star. At I least. had a two star. And that was The Further Adventures of Indiana Jones. The art was good. The writing was not. That's about it. Did you have any three stars? I have quite a few, actually. On my three star list, we have Every Value Break by Peter Swanson. Carmilla by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo, The Shadow, Fire of Creation by Garth Ennis, This Present Darkness by Frank E. Peretti, and I just a minute ago finished a collection of short vampire stories that includes Dracula's Guest by Bram Stoker, Mark of the Beast by Rudyard Kipling, Aurelia by E.T.A. Hoffman, Legea by Edgar Allan Poe and Mrs. Amworth by E.F. Benson. Wow. Those are all my three stars. Any of them you really want me to talk about? Well, since I already forgot some of the ones you said, um, I did notice that you read Every Value Break. That's one that I read last month. I think Marshall was a little less impressed because for him, when you were reading it, you kind of like pinpointed exactly what was happening the whole time because it seemed like a familiar story to you. Is that right? It was one of those where I could definitely see where it was going. She is in a spot where all of these red flags are up, and the red flags telegraphed everything of what was going on. So I guess maybe I should tell you what this book is about. I just realized that I hadn't. So basically what happens in every value break is that this girl gets married, and for her honeymoon, her husband takes her to this island that's supposed to be like this private island, And they are supposed to be having a honeymoon there. She runs into other people that he knows, kind of. And then weird things start happening. And I think we have always said, like, the less you know about this book, probably the better. Because if you're going to enjoy this book, you want to be surprised about what is happening. Mm -hmm. And I kind of was the same way. I think I ended up getting it for. The writing is great. But the story itself did feel familiar to me. It didn't shock me or anything like that. So I think that was just my expectations. I expected it to be phenomenal because all these other people had been reading it and they were like blown away by it. And I kind of felt like, well, what am I missing? (laughs) You know? The other thing that I felt about this book is that while it was very well written, like the actual technique behind its writing was good, I feel like this was a book that probably would have been even better written by a woman. Oh, kind of, yeah. Because you needed to see, from a woman's perspective, a lot of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Because it's being written by a men's perspective, it does kind of lose a lot of the the aspects that only a woman's mind would pick up the, oh, the social point. injustices yeah. that women go through all the time yeah. we can't see it because we don't live it so we can't really write that i think we think back to eight perfect murders by the same author mm-hmm. and i loved that book and i think that's very true it's written from a men's perspective you know there's this this man who's working in a library, or not a library, it's a bookstore. Yeah. And uh, y- yeah, it really is 
it resonates with that, right? And in this case, maybe that's really where it missed the mark. Yeah. So I think we should also talk about Shadow and Bone yeah. just because it's on Netflix and we are working our way through it right now as well. And to be honest, I tried reading it a little bit. I tried listening to it. I've tried listening to Six of Crows. And I had a hard time. I think it was my mindset. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm going to be perfectly honest here. It probably was my mindset, but it was also, it was just too much for me. And now having started to watch the series, if once I finish, I think I can go back and start the books over again and see if I can immerse myself into the Because you actually have a connection point. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, when I was going through these books, Six of Crows really grabbed me very easily. And I just kind of got immersed in that universe because that's where my mindset is. It's storylines and in world building. Mm -hmm. But when I read Shadow and Bone, it kind of bored me up until a certain point. Mm -hmm. But, but... When we're watching the show, I'm fairly certain that it's either including new material or it's including material from other books of the series Mm -hmm. that you just don't see because Shadow and Bone, the book, is written from a single perspective. Right, yeah. And being able to see these other perspectives actually opens it up more and makes it a much more impactful story. Oh, definitely. I I agree with you 100%. And so... In the event that you have difficulty with reading Shadow and Bone, go pick up the Netflix series because it is excellent. It's so good. But we won't say anything more about that in case you haven't watched it yet. Mm-hmm. Let me talk about some of my three stars. I only had two three stars. One of them is a cookbook called Epic Vegan Quick and Easy by Dustin Harder. This comes out June 1st. It was fine. My problem with vegan cookbooks is I'm very picky about meat. So I like finding vegetarian and vegan cookbooks because I need more variety in our diet. But the problem with a lot of vegan cookbooks is that there's a lot of sugar in these recipes. There's a lot of carbs in these recipes because they're trying to make up for not having the meat. And this cookbook didn't really fit into my diet lifestyle, Mm -hmm. but it had some really interesting vegan recipes. So if you are only vegan and you don't care about the carbs, this might be a good one to look up in June. The other book I read that was a three star is called The Perfect Family by Robin Harding. This does come out August 10th. So it is after summer. So bad me for talking about it now. But The Perfect Family is the story told from the viewpoint of four people in the same family. And it is a like a mystery thriller because people are targeting them throwing eggs at their house, tomatoes at their house, breaking their windows. They don't know why. So each person thinks it's because of a secret they have. And so you have to go through all of their inner thoughts to try to figure out like why they're being targeted. And when you finally find out who's being targeted, you're like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, I don't know. It was it was kind of like, to me, a, a, oh, let's give you that, you know, shock value. But it there wasn't any, like, dropped subtle clues that it could be that. So I felt like I was maybe gypped mm-hmm. at the end. So I don't know. If you really like thrillers, you'll probably like this. If you like psychological thrillers, definitely pick this up because... It's interesting. It's an interesting book from that perspective. It just wasn't something that connected with me. I didn't like any of the main characters because they're all flawed. There was no redeeming value. But if you, well, I'm not going to say there was no redeeming value, but to me, there was no connection. And I will talk about a book where there's fully flawed characters in it that I loved. So it's Mm -hmm. not necessarily the component of everyone being flawed that I don't like. It's just that in this way, I connected with none of these characters. Yeah. I mean, I, in my personal thoughts, like I hear what you're saying is the the summary of this book and I'm just kind of like not, I'm not into it mm-hmm. personally. I don't think I, it's your type of book. No. And like I hear the concept and I, I almost want to take it into a gothic horror direction rather than a psychological thriller. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, totally. So that's all my three stars. Let's move on to fours because it seems like we both have one. We can go back and forth if you want. You want to start? Sure. I'm just going to let you know three of them are comics. Okay. But two of them are comics that you actually know something about. Right. 
Okay, so first off is the Warehouse 13 comic Oh, yeah, I love that TV show. Oh, my goodness. First off, Warehouse 13 is the story of these people that work for kind of a shadow government and they collect up magical artifacts from history that are causing chaos and they put them in a warehouse. I think you know what it's called. So these guys go out and girls, actually the team is mostly female at mm-hmm. this point. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah. And when they go out to pick out some artifacts, they find that many of them are from a lost cache and they're like, well, where are all these coming from? But what was really great about this was that it was written in the exact same way as an arc of the show. So you had all these three different kinds of artifacts that seemed had nothing to do with each other mm-hmm. and how the story then came together. And gotcha. I, I, it was very well written. Uh, mine's really short. My first one is The Plant Paradox Family Cookbook by Stephen Gundry. At the beginning of April, Marshall and uh, Corey and I tried the Plant Paradox diet, realized that it wasn't that sustainable, and then kind of modified it to be a Plant Paradox slash low-carb keto Mm -hmm. type diet, but not really. It works better for us. It's more sustainable. We've lost weight. We're good, but we did buy that cookbook. I gave it four stars mainly because the ideas were interesting, but I will say that the recipes are flawed. There's a lot in there that we had issues with cooking, and we cook quite a bit. And uh, yeah, we had some issues with those recipes in theory and procedure. So just But we took a lot of those guidelines and made them work for us. Correct. And that's the important thing. Yes, we did. I also have The Librarians. Mm, Of course. The Librarians is very much like Warehouse 13 in that you have people that work for mystical shadow government that is looking for artifacts that are hidden all over the world. Yay. This one, it's an incursion from another universe, and it was kind of fun. Yeah. That's all it was. It was just fun. My next four-star book is All's Well by Mona Awad. This comes out August 3rd. So yes, another after summer. But this is another one where I was like, I just really want to read this book. Because Mona Awad is kind of like very strange. I tried to read Bunny. Couldn't really get into it that much. Again, I think that was more of a mindset thing. I was not prepared for (laughs) how this author's writing style is. But I wanted to read this one. And the basic premise in All's Well is a woman, she has chronic pain. Mm -hmm. Her legs are stiff. She can't use them most of the time. She's on the floor, like in, in major pain, just not being able to move because she fell off a stage when she was doing Um. a a specific theater production of All's Well. So now she teaches at a college and the theater group is going to do All's Well and they're trying to revolt because they want to do Macbeth because All's Well is kind of like a lesser known play of Shakespeare in that it's not one of the bigs, you know? It's not a a comedy. It's not a tragedy. It, It has a specific name I am blanking on what that name is though so they're gonna do it but then you know the the biggest thing about this book and I think the reason why it connected with me so much is because I have chronic pain as well and she will go to psychiatrists and doctors and therapists and explain the pain and they'll be like there's nothing wrong with you or to the point where they will do things to her harder because they're like they think she's faking it So they like take it out on her because they're jerks and mean people. She had like one therapist that would literally like leave her bruised. I won't tell you how exactly she relieves her pain because that's part of the whole book of it. But I I have gone to chiropractors who have bruised me when I tell them do not adjust my back that hard and they'll do it anyway. And I and I don't go back. I'm like, no. If yeah. you're not gonna listen to me, then no. So there was that part of the of the connection. But what it is about this book that you may not like, if you're this type of person, is sometimes you don't really know what's happening. Mm. Sometimes it's just very like her viewpoint and you aren't sure if she is imagining it or if it's really happening to her or if she's in so much pain she's delusional like you don't know Mm. so if you don't like books like that you won't like this book i liked this book but it was very off-putting to me gotcha (laughs) stuff that happened in this book i was like wow so that's that book i felt like i had to really talk about this one a little while longer because it's just such a unique book 
I think you should read it at some point if you're really into like Mona Awad, if you really like Bunny, or if you're really into like weird thrillers, you'll probably like this one. Okay. My last comic that I actually enjoyed uh, was Doc Savage and the Ring of Fire. I'm going to be honest, I'm not very familiar with Doc Savage, but it's a very old classic style adventure story, kind of like Johnny Quest almost, Mm -hmm. Uh, only Johnny Quest with a lot more testosterone. Gotcha. And it was fun. I I really liked the artwork, though, Mm -hmm. and how the female characters shined through as very strong and didn't necessarily need the men that were running the show to help them. Do you like those type of comics where where it has like the strong female superhero? I generally like stronger female heroines. For male heroes, they need to have a lot more going on. Mm-hmm. I need to see a struggle for them. Right. Like, for Spider-Man, I love how being Spider-Man ruins his life. Mm -hmm. And for Captain America, he is struggling with what he's doing versus what he believes. Do you think the reason for that is because women already have a struggle to become that superhero already? To become, you know, that confident or even not confident person with their powers, that's already a struggle for that they have to overcome? Uh, there is that, yeah. So my next book, I actually have to talk about two at the same time because they are a sequel. Like I said, I am an influencer with Libro, and one of the books that they sent this month for free to listen to was Anna K.O.A. by Jenny Lee. Uh, I had never read the first one, which is just called Anna K. So I got Anna K. from the library. I got the audio version of both, obviously. The story, I didn't even really know what it was based on until I was done with the first book. And there's like a little interview with the author at the end of the first audiobook of how she based this story on Anna Karenina. But she imagined it as what if you lived in this like world of people with money and you know upper crest school and all of that so that is the story of Anna Kay her family is Korean Mm -hmm. and also it's about her brother's girlfriend and girlfriend's sister and then the guy, so it's kind of like three separate stories, right? So it's it's Anna, it's Steven and his girlfriend Lolly. It is this other guy that Anna meets called Vronsky. He's like the Count. They call him Count Vronsky. And he and his cousin B, and their whole world, their whole story and how they're all together. And then the second book, which is Anna K. Away, takes place after things happen at the end of Anna K, which I am not going to tell you, but if you are familiar with Anna Karenina, you could probably figure out what it is. But a couple devastating things happen at the end of Anna Karenina and Anna K to the point where I gasped out loud because I wasn't ready for it. I think Marshall looked at me because I think he was in the room when I was like listening to it. And I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no. And he's looking at me like, are you okay? And I'm like, it's just the book. (laughs) It's fine. So after after Anna K, Anna goes to go live in Korea, or she goes around to Korea for a while because she thinks she's going to go to boarding school mm-hmm. uh, to kind of get away from all the tragedy that has happened in the first book. And then you also follow Lolly, who is her brother's girlfriend, who goes to like a theater camp. And then you follow B, who goes to California, and she meets this girl, and they like who's a surfer, so she kind of does stuff there. And then it all kind of culminates back to this end of the summer party where everything all comes back together. And the story itself, I really liked the first book. The second book was good, but not as good as the first, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But I will say this: it was narrated by Jenna Eshkowitz. She is an actress on the TV show Glee. She is, I don't know that she does a lot of narration when it comes to books. My biggest problem with her was the lack of variety in her speech. Because mm. a lot of times she would be like, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
instead of the words <laughs> you know oh, yeah. um so there was that but like i said she did like a million times better in the second book and i wasn't as distracted by it i gave both of those four stars very good you have any more four stars because i've only got one more uh I, I have many more and i'm pretty sure i know what your four star is it would be a five star of mine so we might just want to talk about it now my four star that is the only actual book that was a four star of this month is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you, for other people, this would be a five-star book. It was for me. Exactly. It is not my type of book, but Daisy Jones and the Six is a historical fiction story about a band and a young singer that... Yeah, she's a groupie. Well, Turned she starts as singer. a groupie, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but she she does become a singer, and then they kind of merge the two because she started off as their opening act. This book reminds me a lot of the movie Almost Famous. It's almost like if Penny Lane became a singer and joined Stillwater. And that's kind of, kind of what this is, but it's a lot more involved than that. Yeah. And the, the way that this was written is that it's written like an interview and it's written like behind the scenes footage like you would see on an MTV kind of mm -hmm, thing. Like a documentary. Mm -hmm. But I did this as an audio book. I actually read this book, yes. Yeah, she read it physically or ebook. Uh -huh. and I did it as an audio book and they did it with a full cast. So every single character had a different voice. Mm -hmm. And it was very good there. The way that this was written was great. Characters would be interjecting on each other's stories. Like, it was very well cut mm -hmm. if you were to have this as an MTV special. Right, yeah. The only reason why this didn't make it to a five-star for me is I just kind of... I saw everything coming, and I didn't care a lot about some of these characters. Some of them, especially Eddie, their guitarist, so whiny. Oh, yeah, he was. Now, he had a good reason to be whiny, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't whiny. Literally, every single time he talked, he was complaining. Yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, I think the reason why I rated it higher than you did is not because I didn't see it coming, because I did see it coming. I didn't read it as a thriller, and after having read other books by Taylor Jenkins Reid in the historical fiction genre... I kind of knew what to expect. I will say that this is probably my third favorite book of hers, my second being Malibu Rising, and my first being Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which Marshall is going to listen to next month. But it, this is not a thriller book. It, no. It's very much, this is what the book is about. It's drama. The, the one thing I did think was funny about it. So this book was the first of the three that I mentioned. Was it her first? Yes. Yeah, I think it was the first that she wrote of those three that I mentioned. And at a certain point, Daisy goes to this party. I think it's at the Chateau Marmont, I think. Yeah. And she runs into this rock star. His name is Mick Riva. And Mick Riva's family is what Malibu Rising is about. Now, Malibu Rising does come out this year. It's not out yet. I think it comes out in June. I already read it. But I had read it backwards because I had read Malibu Rising first. So when I saw him in Daisy Jones, I was like, oh, that is a really great idea is to take this character that you've just written one scene for and put him in its own book. You yeah. know, I really appreciate that that attention to detail in her writing. The other thing that I did like about this book is actually how everything ended. Mm -hmm. Every character went somewhere and I felt like it was a good wrap up for their storyline. Mm -hmm. The whole book is about addiction mm -hmm. and making bad choices with your life yeah. and the havoc it wreaks with it. Right. And how this book addresses this at the end. Right works very well. Now I am remembering there is one thing at the end that I did not see coming. Mm, neither did I. And I was like, what? And it totally makes you see the story in a completely different way, honestly. Mm -hmm. Almost that I want to go back and read it and maybe even listen to it since I didn't listen to it and listen to it with that frame of what is happening because I was like, wow. It's almost like a blink and blink, you, miss you miss it. it. Yeah, exactly. But when you're like, ooh, that makes sense now. Right, exactly. 
All right, so my next four star book that I need to talk about is The Hunting Wives by May Cobb. It comes out May 18th. I did get it from Book of the Month, so that's why I get it early. If you are on Book of the Month, they have new releases. I wish I was sponsored. Hashtag wish I was sponsored by Book of the Month. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not. Anyway, so I do get Book of the Month, and this was one of the ones that I got because it, it was on my list as sounding interesting. And then I was very excited <laughs> to get it ahead of time. So The Hunting Wives is kind of what it sounds like in a way. It is about a woman, I think her name is Sophie, if I remember correctly, and she comes to town. She used to live in this small town back when she was, I think, in high school or something. So she comes back and she starts seeing this group of ladies, these uh, four ladies, who are hanging out all the time. They're very like almost cultured. They've got money. They dress well. They're But they're kind of like, they look like a mean girls club, but she mm -hmm. wants in. So she befriends them and on Friday nights they go skeet hunting. That's how their night starts. But then they decide after that that they are going to go hunting for guys. Now all of these women are married, okay? But they say it's kind of like a what happens on the hunt in the hunting club stays in the hunting club mm -hmm. and one of their rules is they never have sex with the guys they just are like flirting and dancing and whatever that's not necessarily true but that's one of their rules then the girlfriend of one of the wives' son winds up dead okay that i know you're thinking yeah that's funky but sophie all of a sudden finds herself as the subject of the investigation in the murder of this girl mm -hmm. and she's like i don't even know this girl <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> really? So here's my, my thing about this book. When I talk about the, the main characters being flawed, all of them, but they are funny. Their personalities make me like want, like make me like them in spite of myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want to like them. I don't like anything that they're doing. I think they're all like kind of amoral and very shifty and very like, I don't like what they're doing, but... <laughs> The actual characters, it's so like train wreck, you can't look away from it and you really don't want to be reading it, but you just you just keep going because this is a fun book. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's one of those. So definitely if you like books that are not really like middle of the road, definitely pick this one up. It's fun. Okay. But I'm going to tell you, if you don't like characters that are not quite the best, there's a lot of feistiness in this book, I'm just going to say. It's very spicy. Be forewarned. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm probably going to dodge that one because you, you <laughs> did describe this group of women as like a mean girls club, and I cannot do that. Yeah, he's really, he's not, not there. M mean girls make me very unhappy. Yeah. So my next four-star book is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Uh, the reason why I like this book is because of the main character. So the main character is very high-functioningly autistic. Okay. She works with numbers. So she's very smart. She's analytical. She works in like... I think she calls it econometrics or something like that. It's basically the analyzation of economics. But because of her being autistic, kind of high functioning, she doesn't like to be touched. And all the relationships where she's with these guys, they take advantage of her and they kind of like don't consider her, I'm not going to call it a disability, it's not really, but her circumstances as far as not liking to be touched very much. So every sexual encounter she's ever had has been horrible. So she gets this idea that she's going to hire a male escort to teach her how to be a better girlfriend and how to have sex better because she feels like she's bad at it because every every encounter has been bad. Mm -hmm. And so she ends up like screening like some guys on some like escort site and she finds one that actually takes the time to care about her as a person. And then you come to kind of find out that he's being a male escort for reasons. Okay, he's not doing it for, I don't know, reasons that I think you would stereotypically say a male escort would do. Money. But he's doing it for very specific reasons. And though this book was, you know, a little spicy also, the purpose of it was, I thought, very genius and very good. Because to have main characters that have, you know, those kind of limitations sometimes maybe, or like 
isn't your straightforward romantic heroine, I think was very interesting. And this is the first of three books. So I'm going to get the second one from the book of the month, actually. It's coming this month. So I really, I did enjoy this. Again, not your speed, I know. But, but I, I find that main character to be a very interesting one. Back when we were working with Zany Laney, we were working with a character that was transsexual. And that mm-hmm. I did do a lot of looking and researching into a lot of that community because I know nothing about it. I'm not actually a part of it. Right. Um, but, you know, there are people out there that they are not interested in sex at all. Mm-hmm. They are wanting a romantic relationship. And that's it. Yep. They they want to be in love. They want to love another person. But the physical act of lovemaking is revulsion mm-hmm. to them, painful to them. Yeah. And being able to represent that in a romance story is good. Yeah, exactly. Another four-star book that I read this month is Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. I did listen to this and he did narrate it. So you get to hear a lot of like what his acting was alike, where he came from. You know, if you are familiar with the fact that he's well known for saying, all right, all right, all right. He actually talks about how he came up with that for a movie. My favorite part of this book is he is like a foreign exchange student to Australia. And the family that he stays with is so ridiculous. And they are... Very narrow-minded, and it's it's just a, a very funny story. But the the whole topic of green light is looking for like signs in the universe that gives you a green light to go forward a certain mm. direction. So that's kind of what this book is about. I thought it was fine. I, it was fun that it was written by him. But the only problem I had with this book is I didn't feel connected to the story like I do to other celebrity nonfiction books. Gotcha. Um, I don't know why, but I just didn't. But it was very nice and calm to listen to. And he's very like positive. So I did appreciate that part of the book. And speaking of celebrity nonfiction books... I finally finished Homework by Julie Andrews. I started this book like almost a year ago, listened to it on Audible. I love Julie Andrews. She basically taught me uh, elocution when it came to singing. If you talk to a lot of the teachers, the singing teachers I had in college, uh, they will say that my elocution was very good. And I always say, well, you know, Julie Andrews taught me how to sing, kind of, because I would watch Mary Poppins I would watch we watched Victor Victoria Sound of Music so all those things you know I'm she pretty certain that mom and dad never let us watch Victor Victoria and no that was a, like farther down the line <laughs> for, for sure I was um, not even aware that she was in that until much later in yeah life. um so this book is basically her years in Hollywood it starts with you know Mary Poppins Sound of Music and goes on through almost past Victor Victoria but it's also a lot about her and her marriage to Blake Edwards and like some of the struggles that he faced I was very disappointed that they didn't talk about Princess Diaries I just was really sad obviously she did this before Bridgerton really got big but she isn't the narrator on the Bridgerton series on Netflix so that is also cool but she's the type of voice that you can listen to as you're going to bed and you're just like very soothed and calm and Mm. you know that kind of thing the next book i read was miss meteor this is by taylor k meha and anna marie mclemore this is kind of a magical realism book about two girls who lived in new mexico that used to be friends but because of like a rift in their friendship because of one of the girls i think her name is chicky they kind of grew apart Lita is a star, but she's a girl. And her skin is turning back into the star material. She lives with this other woman who also was a star. So she's kind of taking care of her. But she figured out how to not change back into a star. And she said the reason why was because the younger girl came into her life. She realized her purpose on earth was to take care of this girl. So now this girl is trying to figure out what she can do to stop from changing back into star material and stay on earth. And one of the things that she has always wanted to do and never thought she was going to be able to do is enter the Miss Meteor pageant. And it's like this huge thing in the town where they have like a cornhole competition and a Miss Meteor pageant. So the boys do cornhole and the girls do the pageant. But you can only enter the pageant once the entire time. It doesn't matter when you do it, anytime in high school, but you can only enter it once. If you don't win, too bad, can't enter it again. So they're trying to make Lita into this 
pageant to beat this girl who is kind of a jerk um, to okay. everybody. And all these people kind of come to help her along the way. Chicky's sisters, she's got like four of them. They have a diner that's like kind of like a 50s diner that's called Selena. And it's based on Selena, the singer, right? Which is funny because I started watching that show at the same time and I was like, that's interesting, that connection. But it was just really cute and a lot of community aspect to all these people coming together, you know, helping her. And the reason why they call it Miss Meteor is because a meteor fell in their town. And so this girl, Alita, really believes she's made of the same material as the meteor. Mm -hmm. So it was just really cute and I really, I liked it. And it was just, it was like one of those young adult books that you, you just like, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, that sounds like it's really nice and cute and heartwarming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So another four-star book I had was The Royal Treatment by Melody Summers. I'm not going to talk about this a lot because I'm reading the entire series, but this is her other series that takes place in Avonia, and it is about a blogger who is very much against the royal family and everything they stand for and wants them to be disbanded. And the royal family, well, the son of the royal family invites her to the palace to kind of change her mind and also stop the prime minister from voting to eradicate the royal family. I think they call it a referendum. And that's the, the story. I'm not going to talk much about it because I'm going to go read the second book next month and I'll talk about it then. Sure. I also have another cookbook, which is the Low Carb Yum Simple Keto Cookbook. It's cool. I also have Zero Waste for Zero Waste Gardening, mm -hmm. which is also interesting because Marshall and I both are researching ways that we can maybe garden, grow some food of our own. So it was Rather an interesting Rather than, book. you know, paying a bunch of money to big corporations who pay very small amounts of money to farmers. Correct. And that's all my four stars. Woot. Okay, so I do have three more, but we're only really going to talk about two. So the 4.5 I have is called The Ivies. It comes out May 25th. It's by Alexa Dunn. It is a dark academia book about a group of girls at like a private boarding high school that each are going to apply to a different Ivy League college. But this group on the whole manipulates other students to keep them from achieving their goals of also applying to the same college. And the main girl, oh, this is another mean girl story, so Marshall's not gonna like it, but the main girl wants to go to Harvard. She's a triple legacy, she thinks she's gonna get in, finds out she doesn't make it. So she goes on this big rampage to try to figure out who made it to, to Harvard when she did not. And this is really weird, because I actually saw you reading this book on your Kindle, so I was like, huh. So I halfway was reading alongside you. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh wow, that's weird. So the Co the school only lets certain amounts of people apply to certain colleges? No, not really. So what happens is they have uh, advisors, mm -hmm. counselors, and it's not that people can't apply. It's that they can't get references from the advisors for early decision. Okay. Okay. So once you go regular decision then you're fine, but you still don't get references. You can apply and you know, it's, it's a free for all. But early decision means you're in, you have the top recommendations and you're guaranteed your spot. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a little bit different than, you know, just people applying. Also someone ends up dead and it's one of the girls who is going to Harvard, who got that early mm -hmm. acceptance. So that there's that whole thing as well. I liked it. I gave it a 4.5. I thought it was good. There were a couple things that were a little too not great. And if you're wondering about that, it's going to be on my Instagram review post. But let's talk about my one five star besides Daisy Jones and the Six. And it is called This Poison Heart by Kaylin Barron. It comes out June 29th. This book is like a modern retelling of The Secret Garden, but not really. And it is an African-American girl who has found that she has the power to revive plants. Mm -hmm. She also does not have any effect of a poison on her body. If she's touching a poison plant, nothing happens to her. She is adopted by two women and we come to find out that her mother's family has left, her biological mother's family, has left a huge mansion with grounds to her. 
And because her own parents' flower shop is not doing that well, they decide they're going to go to the house and they're going to figure out if they want to stay there and maybe clean it up, see if they can sell it, whatever. And as she's there, she starts to get pieces of a puzzle of the fact that there is a garden in the back Mm -hmm. and she is supposed to help revive the garden. Also, she finds out that her family has this like whole apothecary business where they use the plants from the garden to heal people. But there are people in the town that don't like what she's doing or they need what she's doing, Mm -hmm. both of which are very dangerous. So they start to come after her in different ways. This is part of a series. So there is another one coming out. And I absolutely adored this book. It was so good. I might add that to my list because mm-hmm. that does sound like a really good book. Definitely up your alley for sure. I, a lot of people said that, that they were like, it's like a retelling of Secret Garden. And I was like, no, it's not. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't read it that way. So, yeah. So that was my only like real, my favorite five star for this month. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And this has been quite quite a long episode. So I think we're going to leave you all to ruminate upon what we have said and perhaps incorporate some of these into your own reading. But let's talk about my one five star besides Daisy Jones and the Six. And it is called This Poison Heart by Kaylin Barron. It comes out June 29th. This book is like a modern retelling of The Secret Garden, but not really. And it is an African-American girl who has found that she has the power to revive plants. Mm -hmm. She also does not have any effect of a poison on her body. If she's touching a poison plant, nothing happens to her. She is adopted by two women and we come to find out that Her mother's family has left, her biological mother's family, has left a huge mansion with grounds to her. And because her own parents' flower shop is not doing that well, they decide they're going to go to the house and they're going to figure out if they want to stay there and maybe clean it up, see if they can sell it, whatever. And as she's there, she starts to get pieces of a puzzle of the fact that there is a garden in the back Mm -hmm. and she is supposed to help revive the garden. Also, she finds out that her family has this like whole apothecary business where they use the plants from the garden to heal people. But there are people in the town that don't like what she's doing or they need what she's doing, Mm -hmm. both of which are very dangerous. So they start to come after her in different ways. This is part of a series, so there is another one coming out, and I absolutely adored this book. It was so good. I might add that to my list, because Mm -hmm. that does sound like a really good book. Definitely up your alley, for sure. A lot of people said that that they were like, it's like a retelling of Secret Garden, and I was like, no, it's not. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, oh, yeah, it is. (laughs) (laughs) I just didn't read it that way. So, yeah. So that was my only, like, real, my favorite five star for this month. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And this has been quite quite a long episode, so I think we're going to leave you all to ruminate upon what we have said and perhaps incorporate some of these into your own reading. So, thank you for listening to Elated Geek. Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on things we talked about in today's podcast. You can find Lainey on at Zany Laney or me at One True Hazard. You can also find at Elated Geek on our Instagram, and you can also find Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. If you want to go to a website, we have www.elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us to continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes, and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Email us at share at elatedgeek.com. And until next time, geek out.